كان الجو في البحر هائج وحصل أن بعض اللاجئين معنا على الباخرة توفوا واضطرينا أن نرميه نرقيهم في البحر قررت أن لا أسمح لعدوي بأن يشمت في بأن أكون حزين ولو ليوم واحد قررت أن أبتسم لأغيضه فجأة نجد نفسنا على الطريق لا نملك شيء بدأت أفكر بكيف أحول نظرتي إلى النقمة لتصبح نعمة وأنا عندما أحاضر في الطلبة في الجامعات في الوطن العربي دائما وأحب ذلك أتكلم عن نعمة المعاناة في هذه الفترة كنت أشعر بألم اللجوء أني طردت من بلدي فشو بدي أعمل؟ اللاجئ الفلسطيني وجد نفسه بدون شيء وجد نفسه مسؤولا عن عائلة وجدت أن أفضل أسلوب للانتقام هو أن أتفوق على عدوي وأردت أن أخلق مؤسسة تقول للعالم أن هذا الشعب يستحق الحياة فأنا كنت نظرتي كلها إلى كل ما يراه بعض الناس من أنه معاناة أنا كان دائما عندي نعمة الناس بيفتكروا المعاناة ظلم أنا بشكر ربي إني عانيت نعمة المعاناة بدأت معي من عمري عشر سنين أنا محتفظ الآن بشنطة ملابس كلها رسائل ما زلت محتفظ فيها كلها رسائل جاءتني برفض توظيفي والله لم يكن عندي سنة 72 مكتب ما كانش عندي مكتب كنا ندير عملنا من السيارة كل ما كل من اخترع وأبدع في الدنيا أبدع لأنه لم يجد أحد يدعمه أنا اشتغلت في أثناء الدراسة كل ما يخطر لك اشتغلت أبيع آيس كريم على ظهري أنت يجب أن تقول الله أعطاني نعمة المعاناة أعطاني فرصة أن أعاني لكي أبدع لكي أتفوق لكي أنتصر ونعمة الانتصار في المعاناة طعمها كثير أحلى من الانتصار في في راحة ورفاهية ليس هنالك مهنة إلا ما تخترع أنت اخترع انت شو بدك تكون لنقول للعالم انه مش نحن نستطيع ان نكون مثلكم انه احنا نستطيع ان نكون متفوقين في مجال انتم مش فيه ما في واحد منكم لا يستطيع ان يصبح احسن من طلال ابو غزال كل واحد منكم بس بده يقرر بده ياخذ هذا القرار اقول يا ابنائي افخروا واشكروا ربكم على المعاناه اننا نعيش نعمه المعاناه And I looked for it, I couldn't find it, so I was hopeful that, that it was lost. So I can ignore it and talk to you out of uh, my heart. 58 years ago, students, I sat in the seat you are in today as a graduate in 1960, 58 years ago. And I don't remember a single word that was said at the commencement. So I'm not very hopeful that you will remember many of the things I will say. But if you remember one, one of the 10 prescriptions for success, which I want to read to you, if you remember one of them, and if you believe in one of them, I would be very pleased that I have done my duty today. I am a student. Let, if you ask me what do you do, I am a knowledge worker. I am a student working in knowledge. I am studying just exactly like you study, but with a different approach. In school, you study and sit for exams. In life, you will be sitting for exams 
and learning lessons from the experiences you will have. So your learning process will never stop and it should never stop. You should always think of yourself as learners. But now you don't learn in class and sit for exam. You learn by meeting challenges and facing problems and have the lessons from the problems you have. I will go straight to the 10 prescriptions for success. Please listen to me, students. Please, for once, believe, as, as um, a, a great uh, leader said, the greatest lesson in life is to believe that idiots are sometimes right. So take me for an idiot, but I may be right. I want to give you 10 prescriptions which help me make my, what they call success. I don't call it yet. But let me start. One, love, love your adversaries, your adversaries, your enemies, the people who hate, hate you as much as you love the people who love you. Those who love you, love you because they love you. Those who hate you, help you because they hate you. They are for free, for free. They are there to tell you, I'm watching you, don't make mistakes. So they're doing me a service for free. So I thank them for that. <laughs> don't hate anybody. And I met a friend once, and I call him a friend, and I said, oh, I love you, you're a great man. He said, but I don't love you, I hate you. I said, thank you. He said, what do you mean? I said, thank you for hating me. You're doing a great service. You are a free watch, watching me to, from making mistakes. So please keep hating me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Number two, happiness is an enabler. You cannot succeed if you are unhappy. You cannot make anything useful or productive if you are unhappy. And happiness is a decision. Don't say I was born unhappy, no. You make yourself happy or unhappy. So be happy. <laughs> Happiness is a decision. Make this decision. Make the decision to be happy. Three, hope. Never give up hope. If you read my life story and you see the 100,000 obstacles I met, which made me ho more hopeful, hope is a great weapon for success. Be hopeful. No matter what, no matter how dark things look around you, be hopeful. Look for the first advantage, first mover advantage. Don't copy, don't imitate. Try to be better than what, what you think is, is good. If you see a, a success story, don't imitate it. Try to innovate and be a better person. Innovate. Resist the herd instinct. Don't follow the herd. Don't go with the herd. Go where you should go. Problems and failures are a blessing. If you have a problem, turn it into a blessing by realizing that it's your own mistake. Don't blame it on anybody. And that you are going to learn from this mistake to be a better person and to do better next time. So learn from mistakes and from problems and enjoy them. Turn, success, turn problems into success. Number six, be a natural student. I have never stopped studying since, 90, since 80 years. I'm 80 years now. I'm still a student. I completed my eight years. And I study today as much as you do. As many hours as you do. I'm not, I don't mean read or work, I mean study. That's why I want to call myself, and I like to call myself a knowledge worker. I work in the knowledge domain, in the knowledge meaning intellectual, international, information technology and telecommunication. Work and work and work. Don't listen to anybody who tells you have rest. Rest is bad for your health. 
Work. Work is the best medicine for your life. And if people tell you, you must have rest, tell them, you, are, you don't love me. You want, how, look at your body. The part of you that works nonstop, 24 hours, your heart, if it rests, you're gone. This, this myth, this mistake of believing that body and mind needs rest is a great mistake. It's a great fala, fala, false statement. Don't, don't rest. Work, work, work. Today at 80, I work 18 hours, 16 to 18 hours a day. And I'm 80. Don't think of retirement. I know now you are students and you're still at the beginning of your life. But what is retirement? In Arabic, anna kilmat mutaqa'id. Mutaqa'id is not one word, it's two words. Mut qa'id. Mut wa anta qa'id. I'm not inventing it. There is no root in Arabic for the word mutaqa'id. Ma fi ma fish kilma. But mutaqa'id is not an Arabic word. It's a combined word. Mutu inta'aid. Mat mutu inta'aid. Mutu inta'am tishtaghil. And as long as you work, you kill death. You overcome death. Work is the weapon against death. Work. Never think of retirement. Retirement is the greatest the greatest crime against humanity. Because everybody can contribute and work until his last moment of life. Number 10, invent. This world doesn't need educated people. It's great to be graduated as with this, out of this distinguished and leading university. But the world doesn't need you because of your education. The world needs you before, for your innovation, for what you can invent, for what you can innovate. Because the world is going now into the knowledge era where wealth is created only through knowledge creation. And I don't need to explain it. The largest company in the world today is not an oil company, is not a real estate bank company, is not a bank. It's a company called Google. What is Google? Google is a computer program. Nothing more, nothing less. And to invent Google as a computer program, and so is Facebook, so, is all, so are all the great inventions and the great wealth. Google today is $850 billion worth. How many countries in the world, GDP, if you add it up, makes that? That is where you should go. That is what you should go for how to invent, invent. That's the road to success, and that's the road to help your country, help your nation, and help everybody in the world. <laughs> success is easy. Follow these 10 prescriptions, which I hope, Your Excellency, Mr. President, I hope you could circulate them in writing. Success in making it a leading institution of educational excellence. Mabruk, my grand-grandchildren. I cannot say children, because I have in the audience here, I have in the audience here two of my, or three actually, of my grandchildren who have graduated, already graduates. So please let me call you grandchildren and granddaughters. I am honored to be your commencement speaker today. I'm honored for the honor you bestowed on me, and I'm honored to be in your distinguished presence. I am humbled, I am very humbled by being here with you. Thank you very much. <laughs>